Spear. This, um, I think we've, this might be our first or second live stream that we've done in the new year. So either way, happy new year. Happy Monday morning to everyone. Gonna wait a couple of seconds to go live or to get going because I made a little tiny mistake this time and I actually programmed this live for last night. My apologies. We know that here, if you have been following, we do this live Mondays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Central. So bring your questions, bring your attention, bring your anything um, to the live stream. I absolutely love to engage with you in every way that we possibly can. So thank you so much for being here. I'm just going to go through and check a few things, making sure that we are live where we need to be live. Today we're talking about Facebook ads. Super excited for this topic because it was heavily requested and especially now, especially now because we're in a new year, we're trying to we're trying to differentiate ourselves and also looking at different strategies that we may have overlooked in the past. So 2020 is behind us now. It's 2021. And there's different interfaces that we need to um, that we need to navigate through. There's different uh, ads that are working today. There's just different everything all the way around. So today is a huge is a huge opportunity for us to hit the start new button and do just that. Start new with the Facebook ads that we have going. So let me make sure as you're coming in, let me know where you're listening from. I would love to. I would love to. Um, I would love to know. And um, let's see here. Awesome. Alrighty. So, again, the notifications are going to be going out here shortly. As um, as I did a tiny mistake and didn't um, didn't didn't set them up appropriately last night, but that's okay. You'll come in when you come in, and if you're watching the re replay, just let me know in the comment section that you're watching it. As the replay. So again, huge thank you, uh, huge thank you for being here, and also a huge welcome. Happy New Year! Let's get going. Today we're talking about lead generation. We're talking about real estate leads specifically, and also we are gonna go from beginning to end. Carrie from Carrollton. Hey, Carrie. Glad that you're here, Carrollton. As I mentioned to you earlier, well, that's where I used to live. I used to live in Castle Hills over in Carrollton, a fantastic home, fantastic community. So super excited that you're right down the road. Um, so thanks for being here. Now, when it comes to Facebook ads, the Facebook mastery, we're going to go from beginning to end. So we're going to talk about the Facebook page. We're going to talk about the business manager. We're going to talk about ad accounts and then we're going to launch an ad. And then also I'm going to show you what to do once your ad is going, uh, when, once your ad is up and going, because there's some questions on, well, how do I even get to the stage of creating an ad and also there's some questions of well, what do I do after the leads start coming in so we're going to address those questions there's a reason I called it the Facebook ads mastery because I'm not going to leave any stones unturned so you can see how simple it is I'm not saying it's easy I'm saying it's simple to get into your Facebook um, lead generation and be effective with it so I may even throw in a few ad copies here and there I'm not sure it just depends on how much um, how much time we get through today but Let's get going. As you're coming in, if you smash that like button, that's going to really help out. Send the notifications out to all the subscribers and new subscribers. So I highly thank you. And if you're all over on Facebook, then I'm also seeing your chat here. So we are off to the races. Let's get going. All right, so I'm going to share my screen right now. So what you should be seeing on the screen is Facebook for Business. Now, now recently, Facebook did a dramatic overhaul with their interface. So now it's called the Business Suite. And I'll uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about that here shortly. But the very first thing you need to understand that you need a business page to operate from. Now, I'm not going to go through and show you how to create a personal page. I that's just I'm taking it as an assumption that you know how to do that because most of you already have that. So 99% of you that are watching right now have a personal page. But the next step is to create your business page. Your business page is heavily important so so much so that it is the uh, catalyst to you actually creating ad accounts. If you don't have a business page, then you're not going to create ad accounts. That's just not going to work. So rather than go through the nitty gritty of what of what it takes to create a business page you're just going to see of course you're going to need the basic information name and description name of what your business is and what it actually does now something very important that is overlooked is the business name it's important for a branding perspective but also keep in mind the person or the entity that has the decision on whether you can change your business name down the road is facebook so let me repeat that facebook is the 
entity that decides if you change your name down the road, if they're going to allow for the change to happen. So that means that if you move brokerages, as an example, there could be, you could run into a situation where you can't change the name of your brokerage. So you can't change the name of your business page. I'm sorry, you can't even change the name of your business page if you change brokerages. So just be aware of that. Make sure that you, if you're, if you're calling your business, um, something make sure that it has to do with real estate because that's how facebook determines it it determines based off of industry so as an example if you create a business page that's about knitting so it has knitting in the name and then you try to change it into something radical like um forensic science i don't know um it's not gonna allow that because you're just so far off from the people that engaged with you in the community it's just it's just um, it's just completely wild. It's, it's not anything that you can do. So make sure that your name is reflective to the industry that you're in. So real estate, real estate agent, realtor, all that's going to be fine. So just make sure that you're aware of that. Your profile picture, of course, that's super important. It's your brand. It's your building. Building block to having people know you and like you. And then the cover photo, if you're struggling for a, co a cover photo because you're not very design oriented like I am, then go to canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com, and it's going to give you a lot of templates to choose from. You can easily navigate the the um, the image dimensions. You can e easily navigate just the overall creation of any visual graphics that you can think of. And then action you want people to take. So this is what they mean is provide information um, that's set up uniquely to the services so that you provide. So whether you sell services or you sell products, they have templates. Facebook gives you templates on, hey, this is typically what a service business layout looks like. So it gives you the features that a service business has. This is typically the what a Shopify store would have or product-based store would have. And then it would give you the template and the layout the easiest thing to do is go to the um, is is create a call to action button at the bottom right below the the banner head, but also the, the I'm sorry the cover photo, but also make sure that you um, that you're going in there and customizing to your needs. So Facebook business page absolutely necessary. This is something that you can't go without. You're gonna need this now. One quick question that's gonna come up is, well, what about my Instagram page? You can run ads through your Instagram page. In fact, Instagram is um, is owned by Facebook, so you're able to create ads directly from Facebook over on Instagram. You can run ads without having an Instagram page. So you can advertise from Facebook over on Instagram, and you're gonna draw people back to Facebook or draw to your account. You don't have to have an Instagram account. I strongly suggest that you do. If you're gonna be running ads on Instagram, it's important that you run it on your Instagram page, but you don't absolutely have to. So that's something that most people are not aware of. All right, so let's get going. One of the biggest things, one of the biggest mistakes that happens whenever we're creating some Facebook ads is that we are running ads on our personal ad account. Every time that you run an ad, you're creating, or the first time that you run an ad, you are creating a personal ad account. This personal ad account is tied directly to you. It's the reason it's called a personal ad account. So this means that all of the ads that you run are under your name, under your banner. Um, your, I'm sorry, not under your name, under your um, associated directly to your to your personal page. You can still run the ads within the name of the business page, any business page that you can that you can think of. The big thing there, there is that if you get flagged and you get your ads disabled, then the entire thing blows up. So the entire thing goes down. This means that your personal page is gonna get locked. This means that your ad account is gonna get locked. This means that you're not gonna be able to run ads. Um, <clears throat> when I say your personal page get logs, locked, I mean from running ads. So basically, you're not able to run ads. So that's why it's super important that you create a business manager. A business manager creates a level of separation from your personal to your business. So your business manager becomes like your little holding entity that you can create multiple lines of business within the business manager. You can create different ad accounts. You can link up different Facebook pages. You can invite different partners if you have other people running your ads or if you uh, uh, have other people within your business that want access to the business pages so they can post and manage. You have that business manager there to create that flexibility, create that um, those different abilities to do different aspects of that you want in your business. But 
More importantly than even the functionality, I want you to get a business manager today if you don't have one because of the liability. Because keep in mind what I just mentioned. If you're running ads on your personal ad account in the event that Facebook says, ah, we don't like that ad, whether they're right or wrong, and you appeal their decision of their disabling of your ad accounts, and you appeal and you lose, then you're done. You have to start from scratch. You have to create a new personal account. And here's, here's something that's even crazier. They're able to see if this is exact. This is you again. So there are instances where some of um, some people get in trouble, whether through their fault or not, that they go and create a new personal account, and Facebook still sees, oh, well, it's uh, it's it's Jaime again. He's trying to create a. He's trying to circumvent. No, this one's is also um, this one's also associated to Jaime as a person, so he can't run any more ads. So that's mission critical. That's mission critical. So make sure that you have your business manager account. Once you create your business manager account, then you go off and create some offshoots, different businesses, different assets, different ad accounts. And that's how you're going to, um, that's how you're gonna you know, sleep well at night, if you will, especially if you're running a lot of accounts. This is the best way to do it. All right, so manage ad accounts, pages, and people. So it's a, it's in one place, it's free, and then it goes on to give you a bit more information that will, um, that's, um, just technical speak or not even technical speak it's just marketing speak then you just go to create uh, an account so as you can see here is business.facebook.com slash overview you create your account I'm already maxed out with my business manager accounts you're about you're able to create two um, last I checked so you have two the ability to create two business managers but you really don't need more than one unless you want to have a redundancy so um, that's that's part of the reason that you want a business manager if your ad account gets shut down, then you create another ad account. If your business manager gets shut down, then you create another business manager. That's how you can do it. All right, so you're gonna go through that. Just hit create. Uh, I'm not gonna go through because it's actually not gonna allow me to because I already have them maxed out. So when you create an account, it's gonna ask you for the time zone. It's gonna ask you for what do you wanna call this? Uh, what do you wanna call this business manager? You can call it whatever you want. It's not front facing to the public. It's just you so you can um, so you're the only person that sees that name. So don't, don't worry. Don't overthink the name. And this is going to ask you for some business information, like the business email. If you don't have a business email, then you can use your same one or a different one that you have lying around. And then also if you're working for a big company, just I'll say this, if you're working for a big company that has at, um, let's just say exp realty at K, uh, KW at century 21, whatever, don't don't, um, you're not going to be able to use that domain uh, again. So if you put in hymen.rescindus at exp realty, that at exp realty is not going to work because that domain has already been claimed by somebody else, i.e. exp realty. So just be aware of that. Just use another email and you're going to be fine. Input the information, the business information, the address, the phone number, all that other fun stuff, and then you're up and running. And that's when you get into your business suite. And your business suite is giving you the different pages, giving you different ad accounts, giving you different access to different things. I personally don't like that new layout. And in fact, I actually can't even get back to it so, or else I would show you. But whenever you go through and you create the create what I'm suggesting, the business manager, if this is the first time that you're doing it, you're going to see something that's called the business suite. The business suite is something that I don't like. <laughs> I just don't like it's it's a completely different. So to get back to where you're what you're seeing right now and what you're gonna see with the Adam, um, the traditional business manager that you're accustomed to, you would just go to the left hand side towards the bottom, there's gonna be a old version or go to ads manager or go to business manager, something like that. I can't remember exactly. I've only had about three to five agents that I that I personally help with the advertising that have come here in the past week. So they're joining my team at eXp Realty because of what we do for them and help grow their business. So I've only had about five at most agents this past week that I've seen um, I've seen this new interface in. So just giving you a complete heads up. On the bottom left you're gonna see the um, you're gonna see the switch to business manager, I believe. So that's how you get back to it. But with that being said, that's just the business page, creating your business manager, create your ad accounts within, make sure that you have your business pages associated, and now you get back to creating a campaign. So this is the ads manager, and how you get here is very simple. Your, your chances are you're gonna end up in business settings whenever you create your account. 
All you have to do is go back to the ads manager right here. This is where you can get to billing. This is where you can get to the events manager. If you're creating a Facebook pixel for the first time, that's where you would go and do it. When you're creating a, let's see, audiences. So when you're creating retargeting audiences or lookalike audiences, that's where you're gonna go and do it at the audiences section. As you can see here, this is a hub to everything that you have. So you have all the different hyperlinks that you can get into. So we're not gonna go through all of that right now. I'm more interested in you going through the essentials of getting to launching your campaign. So make sure that you, um, by the end of this time together, you have a fully functioning campaign without missing a step. All right, so now that you have everything that you need, you've created your business page, you created your, uh, your business manager, you created your ad accounts, and you've associated your Facebook pages over to your, to your uh, business manager, now you're in a position to run your ads. One quick little tip that's gonna avoid you a lot of heartache. Whenever you go through and create another ad account and create all that fun stuff that I'm sharing with you, you're gonna have a little drop down arrow. So this means that you're gonna have two accounts. One is gonna be your personal ad account, which I suggest you don't run any ads through because that creates liability for you. And you're gonna have that ad account that you just created. This ad account that you just created is the one that's gonna be the secondary option. So you're not gonna start off with the one that you want. So you would just hit the drop down arrow and then select the one that you created, not the personal one. Just make sure that you do that because I've run into many situations, especially with the agents that are getting started for the first time and running ads, where they're telling me, well, I created everything. I did exactly as you said. and." Um, I just can't get access to it again. Well, it's because they are actually in the wrong ad account. So just be aware of that. All right, so let's get going. We're gonna go and create. And now we're gonna have three, uh, three primary ways of marketing. So there's gonna be awareness, consideration, and conversion. So just think of it from top of funnel to bottom of funnel. So top, you're creating awareness, you're creating people, you're grabbing people's attention and an introduction to yourself, to your brand, to your product and service, right? So that's your awareness. So this is gonna go out far and wide. It's gonna go out there and grab people's attention and you're gonna reach as many people as possible. Considerations when you start putting them, pulling them down through the funnel and considerations where, okay, so they're, they're likely to do business with you. So now we're gonna put some intentions behind it and whenever you click one of these, it's a different modality of reaching your audience. So what I mean by that is in the traffic consideration, traffic means that you can redirect all of the traffic, all of the ads that you, um, all of the people that click through your ads, you can redirect them to a website of your choosing. That's what traffic is. And it's the most flexible one. Engagement, that means that it's a post on your business page that you can create um, an ad towards. So many of you that are running ads not like this are out there boosting which i highly encourage you to stop if you're boosting let's stop that today if you're boosting that's just um that's just not gonna work so I, that's down rabbit hole so let's stick on this engagement is a level of boosting but the more sophisticated way because you get more options that way so it's drawing attention to a post that's on your business page that's what engagement is now a lead generation, that is where you keep people on Facebook. So the lead generation campaign leads to a lead form that you can run ads to. And then when people click learn more, they stay on Facebook. They don't go to your website. They don't go to your landing page. They don't go anywhere. They stay on Facebook and fill out their information in the Facebook ecosystem. Messages, that is You've heard, you've heard the word bots be thrown around for a longest time. So this is where you can connect your messenger bot. So the messages ad is basically whenever somebody clicks learn more, they're gonna go to your messages camp, uh, messages. So your DMs, your, your messages in relation to your business page, and then you can create some automations that way. So this is, as you can see here, when there's consideration, that middle of funnel, people are starting to take action. People are encouraged to take action and Facebook makes it easier. So giving you the options of, well, where do you want them to, where do you want with, where do you want them to engage with you? Do you want them on your website? Do you want them on your landing page? Do you want them on Facebook with your lead generation? Do you want them in the DMs? Do you want them on your Facebook business page through engagement? Do you want them um, that are through videos? So people that are more susceptible to watch videos it gives you options, right? The ways to communicate with the audience. 
and now conversion that is more of the bottom of funnel the conversion is really where you're optimizing your conversions where you're out there seeking that sale so conversions it's actually I was about to say one of my favorites. I think it is my favorite, I think, at this point. So conversions campaign is what it's I was about to say one of my favorites. It is my favorite. If I'm just gonna be candid, it's like it's one of your babies, right? It's your oh well, I, I can't choose one. Which one's my favorite? I yeah, it's conversions. Conversions is um is a fun is a fun campaign to launch because it takes the folks that have converted, so either they bought your product or used your service. It takes those individuals and goes out and finds some other people that are going to be likely to be conversion. So Facebook has a lot of information, so they're going to go out there and serve your ads to people that are highly likely to convert. So that's the conversion. Now, I have a full video tutorial on how to do that because that's a little bit more involved. You have to create your Facebook pixel. You have to install your Facebook pixel. You have to create your custom conversion, and then you actually have to launch this campaign. So there's three steps that you have to get right before you can even consider clicking this little button right here. So we're not gonna have time for that today. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a traffic campaign. It's the more most universal one. This gives you the most flexibility, whether you're sending people to your website, sending people to a landing page, sending people to call you directly because you have that ability. It's gonna give you the most flexibility. So that's what we're gonna go with through today. And then um, if you're looking for a lead generation campaign, so keeping people on Facebook, that's, um, I'll link up a video once we're through here. I'll link it at the, uh, at the uh, I'll try to link it up here, but also in the description. So today we're gonna go with the traffic campaign. We rarely do that because it is so universal, but, um, but we're gonna go ahead and go with the traffic campaign today. All right, so since we're talking about real estate, I wanna hear your questions. Let me know in the comment section down below as you're joining. If you haven't hit that like button, I really do appreciate you considering doing that today and doing that right now. Um, that it's, it's not gonna cost you anything, it's absolutely free. It's actually gonna help magnify this broadcast and really gonna help me out specifically because I messed up on scheduling it, scheduling it when I was supposed to. Anyway, so with that being said, any questions, I highly welcome them down below. Really, um, really I do. All right, so when it comes to the campaign name, what I like to do with campaign names is name it something that I'm going to remember. So personally, you can do this differently, but personally, since I have hundreds of ad campaigns to sift through basically every day, here's what I have to do, or here's what I do to make it a lot easier. Not only do I know my numbers, my metrics, and everything, um, so I know which which types of ads should be performing with certain, certain mile markers, that's all in my head at this point. I should probably write that down. Um, let me know if you'd like to see a video on that and you know the the metrics that I look at the click-through rates the uh, conversion rates the uh, the cost per lead let me know if you'd like to see a video like that I personally think it's quite too technical that it wouldn't really do well in this environment in Facebook but I'm sorry in YouTube but just let me know I can do that anyway so with the naming convention so I can keep myself straight and know what I'm doing very very easy I would just do something like this so with the campaign name I'm gonna call out the type of campaign that I'm launching. So in this in this case, it's a, I'm sorry, it's not even that, it's the traffic. So it's the traffic campaign, so there you go, I'm messing up. It's the traffic campaign, which is the most universal type of campaign. So I'm calling out the type of campaign, and that since I'm at the campaign name, so right near now we're at the campaign level, that set level, and then the ad. So remember, campaign level, ad set level, and then the ad. So right now I'm calling out what you're seeing right here. So as you can see, lead and then Cleburne, that is giving me, um, giving me a, it lets me know the type of campaign that I ran. Now for me right now, I think we're just gonna run a just listed ad because I, without thinking, I wrote it. So let's go with traffic and it's gonna be a just listed. So I know that this is a type of campaign that I'm launching and I know that this is a type of ad that I'm gonna launch. So type of campaign and then the ad. The reason I don't feel this particular name out right here is because I'm gonna be split testing. So this could very well be um, a Zillow interest. It could be a Trulia interest. It could be whatever it happens to be. So I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna label it all at once here because I don't know what split testing I'm gonna do yet. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this for now, go over to the ad, uh, the special ad category, credit employment, housing, and politics basically. Those are under the special ad category. This restricts your targeting from the back end. So this means that you can't target based off of age. You can't filter based off of 
gender. You can't filter based off of behaviors and demographics. So that's those are some restrictions that you have. It's too, um, it's too comp not too complex, but it's just too much to go into this right now. So I'll make sure that I link a video on the special ad category, why it was introduced and what to expect in the future. But just understand that if you're running a housing ad, which you are today, this is a real estate ad, then you do want to call it out. All right, so let's see. Let me do one quick thing real quick. All right, now that we have um, this understanding, let's continue going. A-B split testing. I don't like doing A-B split testing from here. I like to do it manually, so we're not going to waste any time with that. Campaign optimization. So campaign optimization at this level is telling Facebook, Facebook, I trust you. I understand that you're going to go out there and spend my money wisely. So if I have $100 that I want to spend per day, then I'm going to go out and create different targeting and different ads that Facebook will go out and auto serve. So instead of me allocating $5 to this ad set, $5 to this ad set, and then $5 to this ad set, Facebook is just going to say, well, these top two, they're not that great. People just don't convert whenever you're type, whenever you're sending out this message. So I as Facebook being just very wise, I'm just going to go and allocate the entire hundred dollars that you were trying to split test onto this ad set. So this does the, I'm not going to say does the thinking for you, but it goes, it has a lot more data points than you do. I vacillate back and forth. There's been some campaigns that are absolutely crushing it with this that with this type of bu budget optimization, but then there's also many times where I crush it individually, where I do my own split testing with my own budget, everything everything the same except just the targeting, and um, it performs better than the campaign that's budget optimized. So personally, I still like having a little bit of control, so I don't do this. But for our purposes today. We're going to go ahead and go with the campaign budget optimization. And one of the questions I get asked is, well, how much should I be spending for um, per ad set or per split testing? I highly encourage you at bare minimum, absolutely bare minimum, and I'm being generous, $5 per day on each ad set that you're split testing, at least. I would love for you to be at $10 to $20 range, but I understand budgets are different. So... I'm not going to tell you what to do, just giving you some suggestions. All right, so what I'm going to do now is fill the rest of it out. So remember, this is my campaign. This is the type of ad that I'm going to run because that's going to be consistent. And now what I'm going to do is, let's just say I do traffic, uh, not traffic. Let's just say I do a Zillow interest. That's what I would call it right there. I'm going to send people to the website. Funny story that if you send people to Messenger, it actually converts it to a messages campaign. <laughs> There you go. So that now, now you know. Now you know. But anyway, we're gonna keep people on traffic, and then dynamic creative. It's just where you create a different, different images, different headlines, different, just different. It, it, this works really good for if you have a a store like a Shopify store. You have many different products where you can mix and match products. So such as an example of Adidas shoes. Um, hey, size 11s. Uh, Air. I was about to say Air Jordans. Um, Adidas shoes, I can't even think of their models uh, or whatever they're called. So different types of shoes. So this is, um, it goes out and creates and mixes and matches according to the user. That's pretty neat. But with real estate, it's not that useful. Offer, just where you can offer a discount on your products. Well, with real estate, there's really not much that you can offer outside of discounting your commission. And you certainly don't want to advertise that out on the marketplace unless that's your gig. If that's what you're, if that's how you market, then that's how you market. All right, so this is where you call back out those audiences that we were talking about a couple of minutes ago. When it comes to retargeting audiences, when it comes to um, saved audiences, whatever the case may be, this is where you call them back out. And this is also where you call out the special ad category. Now, I'm not going to get into too much of the saved, custom, and look -alike, uh, special lookalike audiences. Just understand that whenever you create a custom audience, you can call them back out right here. This is where you go. I get the, a, a lot of DMs of, hey, you suggested to install my Facebook pixel on my website. I did that. How do I, how do I get back to it? How do I access the people that visited me? Well, you would go over to those nine dots that you saw over there, go to the audiences tab, create your look like, um, create your custom audience, and then this is where you would click through to access that audience again. All right, so we're gonna go 
to people living in this location. So we're interested in people that are living in this location, but understand you can do people living or recently in this location. So travelers by, and then people that have been there for whatever reason. And then also you can specifically call them out. So you see the areas right there. I'll let you read through those while I get a little bit of coffee. So that's your locations. But I, for all intents and purposes, unless I'm doing some relocation ads, I just leave it with living in this location. If I'm doing relocation ads, then I'll do traveling or recently in and then um, and then advertise at the destination point. And then also, if I'm if I know that there's a huge migration from California to Texas, which there is, then I'm gonna advertise on California and then I'm gonna leave people living in this location. Now, if I'm uh, advertising in Florida, then I know that the highway there is basically one way, New York to Florida. <laughs> so that is, um, that's just understanding patterns. And going to your state's website, will uh, your physical state's website, um, whether you're in Georgia, whether you're in Mrs. wherever, wh whatever state that you're in, you, you have those statistics available to you. So just go to your state's website and you'll find travel patterns there. All right, so the rest of it, we're gonna leave as is right now. The thing that we do like split testing as much as possible is the interest. So remember, because we're in the special ad category, credit, employment, housing, and elections or politics, then um, we cannot target based off of demographics. So I can't target people that have um, older children. I can't do that because that would be discrimination or that's how Facebook is protecting itself from discrimination, if you will. So you can't target based off of demographics and you also can't target based on behavior. You can target based off of interest, something that they have shown interest in. So you have a good assumption that people that are interested in Zillow will are considering something real estate related, right? So you're gonna do Zillow. Oh, and I, sorry, I forgot to put the, let's see, Las Vegas. All right, so we're gonna go with Las Vegas, 220,000 is the reach now that we've applied the Zillow interest. And now if you want to narrow in an audience, so if you wanna say, hey, I also want people that are interested in Trulia. So I could go with Trulia right here, and then it reduces. But check this out, so this is a and must also match. So this is how you narrow it. If you wanted to add, which I don't encourage that you do, but if you wanted to add Zillow, Trulia, blah, 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 you can add them all right here. I don't suggest that you do that because you don't know if all of your conversions are from people that are interested in Zillow or the people that are interested in Trulia or people that are interested in homes.com. You want to split test that is what I'm getting at. So let me pause for one quick second. Let's get some questions answered. Do you still believe in keeping interest simple using one or two? Um, yes, actually, that's a very good that's a very good segue to what um to what I was referencing right here. I don't necessarily call it keeping interest simple. I'm split testing, so I'm not gonna add Trulia as an example. I'm not gonna add Trulia because here I'm I'm saying somebody that's interested in Trulia or Zillow or somebody that's interested in in Zillow or Homes.com. So I'm saying or 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 or. There are many times whenever you split test these individually, you're gonna find that Trulia be beats Zillow. Then you're gonna find that Zillow beats Trulia. That's the only differentiating factor. So if you lump them in together, then you're not gonna have a way to stack, uh, compete against each other. You're not gonna be able to um, to see what the differences were. So make sure that you're um, that you're aware of that because it's not me necessarily keeping things simple. It's just me keeping things in a split test fashion so I can get actionable results after I go through my reports. Hey, what's up? Hey, Homes Compass. Actually, let's do some of this. All right, so Carrie, come over here, Carrollton. Thanks for checking in. Dave, do you still believe in keeping, uh, keep interest simple? One or two, we just, we just went through that. So um, hopefully that makes sense, Dave, let me know. And then Holmes, hey, what's up? Hey, 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 hey. And then also, Dave, do you ever use a messenger campaign? I do. I do use messenger campaign. I use them with regularity. Let me know if that's a video that you'd like for me to do. Um, it's something that Facebook continues to evolve in which I really like the, uh, the things that they're doing with the messages. So the bots became the biggest thing since I spread about two years ago. They're still pretty popular right now. But when it comes to the messages campaign, just from Facebook alone, 
Facebook is doing some neat things to keep you engaged and create some slight automations that way. All right, so let's, um, again. All right, so Tom, again, you say I can create a custom audience, even the housing ad category. Yes, Tom, you are able to create a custom audience. You're able to create a custom audience based off of the people that visited your website, based off of people that engaged or visited your Facebook page or liked your page, engaged with your Instagram page, um, watched certain videos of yours. Um, you're even able to upload your database onto Facebook and market to them. Now, this is why it goes very back to the very bare, um, the, the beginning of the introduction of creating a business manager. You're not able to upload your custom audience unless you have a business manager. This is the, um, this is a, the point that you need. This is the item that you need before you can go up and have that functionality. So if you don't have a business manager, you can't upload your database. So yes, you can create custom audiences. And then you can even have special ad audiences that, that look at the custom audience and Facebook is going to go out and find people with similar criteria of people that are likely to um, act based off of the, the general theme that it senses from the people that you uploaded. All right, so that's a great question. Great question. All right, so what we're going to do is go to manual placements. This is a split testable event if I ever saw one. So what that means is going back to the interest, you saw me here give you the um, the whole explanation of why Zillow, why Trulia, why Homes.com individually, but take that same split testing mentality and apply it here. Do the same thing here. I don't like advertising to everybody unless there's two, there's two primary reasons that I do go with automatic placements. But I don't like advertising to everybody because I don't know which one's giving me results yet. I don't know if Facebook newsfeed is gonna give me better results than the Instagram feed, so I separate them. This way I see, all right, it looks like my Facebook newsfeed is outperforming the Instagram feed, so I'm gonna go with this. Now, I have a video in this channel that actually proves out that Instagram feed in that particular instance actually beat out my Facebook newsfeed. In that particular interest. Now that was super rare. Uh, rare. I actually didn't expect that when I was making that video, but um, but it happened. Most of the time, this actually wins out. So that's what I suggest that you default to. Now the two the two um, the two reasons that I would say do the automatic placements are if your audience size is super tiny, the potential reach, which this is wrong most of hundred percent of the time actually, but um um it just gives you a a potential so a range a, a um it's not going to be exact. But if you see this be below 10,000, as an example, then I would go to automatic placements because there's not enough of a reach there. So I'm comfortable, okay, let's just blast it everywhere. Let's blast Instagram, let's blast Facebook, let's blast me Messenger, let's blast everywhere we possibly could. Now, that's when I would leave automatic placements. So that's one, if the audience isn't large enough. Two, which is kind of a version of number one, but whenever I'm retargeting. So whenever I'm retargeting, I, yeah, I may have run my first ad only to Facebook newsfeed. However, once I get some clicks, once I get some engagement, once I get some good things happening, then I can go to automatic placements and then boom, be everywhere in the eyes of the client. So I create that walking billboard so that's in their hands most of the time. So that way they see me everywhere. They see me on Instagram. Then they see me over here on partner websites. They see me over here on Facebook marketplace, they see me everywhere. So that's the other reason, that's the second way that I would go with, um, the second reason that I would go with automatic placements. But to start out, I want data. I want data, I want to see what's working. So that's why I would go to manual placements. And also it's effective, it's really effective. All right, so let's continue. Um, since we're running a traffic campaign, we're gonna go with optimizing for landing page views. So peep, I want you to read that for a quick second. We'll deliver your ads to prepare who are more to people who are more likely to click on your ads link and load the website or instant experience. So load the website, that's what I'm after. So people that click and actually wait for the website to load. Those are the people that I wanna optimize for, not people that are just habitual clickers. I don't want those. I don't want people to just click, 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 click. That's not what I'm optimizing for. I'm not optimizing for people that actually go and um, upload my website. All right, so any questions so far, let me know in the comment section down below. If there's any questions, I would love to field them. As you're coming in, 
Remember, we do this live on Mondays and Fridays, 9 a.m. Central. So make sure that you mark it on your calendar. A huge subscribe button would go a long way. So I do appreciate you uh, considering the subscribe button. Also, the like button. That's going to help get this message out there. Send out the notifications to people that should be here partaking in this message because it's valuable to their business. So just... Um, just a huge thank you for everyone that's here and that will be watching this later on. All right, so <clears throat> any questions that come through, I'll make sure that I stay on top of them. So just let me know. All right, so now we're at the ad portion. So we've talked about campaigns. We talked about the ad set. So now we're at the ad level. So just to give you a quick summary of what this means, the campaign is basically the objective. What's your goal? What are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to get more people just to be aware of your brand? Are you trying to get people that actually convert? Are you trying to get people that are going to purchase or at least consider purchasing? What's your goal? And then here at the ad set level, it's who you're targeting. So it's like who you want to see your ads. So where where are they geographically? What are their interests? Where do you want them to see your ads? Or do you want them to see on, your, on Instagram or on Facebook, on mobile? If you're doing a call only um, option, then, um, then make sure that the mobile is flipped on. So just different nuances there that you need to be aware of. So at the ad set level, that's what we're talking about. And then at the ad level, this is the front facing side. What do you actually want people to see? This is the ad portion. Now, as you can see here, you can add the Instagram placement and also attach your Instagram if you want, but um, we're not gonna go ahead and go through with this right now. Just um, that's where you would go and do it. And now, when it comes to creating your campaign, you can do multiple things as a reminder, traffic campaign, which is the campaign that we selected at the very beginning, is the most universal, most flex, most universal, most flexible, most adaptable type of campaign that you can run. So what that means is you have a lot more options than let's say a messages campaign. A message ca messages campaign ends differently. The messages campaign ends in your DMs. So you're gonna have a few of these options go away because of the destination. Does that make sense? All right. So <clears throat> here's what we got. You can do a single image or a video. You can do a carousel ad. So a carousel ad will give you multiple cards right here. So you're going to see one card, one card, right, one card. I love carousel ads. That's something I encourage you to do. The one thing that you're going to struggle with carousel ads, it's actually a square. So as you can see, houses are, when you're taking the professional pictures, they're more horizontal, right? So that's why having a software or a, a access to Canva, which is absolutely free, is super important. Now, also, my little, my little trick, my little hack, if you will, is using a software that I absolutely love, which is InVideo.io. InVideo.io is a website that I use for my video ads. Now, if you want the uh, discount link, it will be linked down below, but you can make actual customized videos for your ads and it's already formatted how you want. So check it out. It's it's well worth the um well worth the investment. So I'll make sure I link that down below. I didn't even think about doing it before the live stream. So I'll make sure I do that after we wrap up today. So carousel, you can have multiple images and multiple videos. Again the downside is that they're square. So you do need to play around with some formatting. But if you use Canva for the video uh, the images, if you use InVideo for the video, you're not gonna run into any problems. All right, so these are cool. I like these. It's just beyond our scope today. So add an instant experience. So think of it basically like your own little website. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. It's neat. Um, playable source file. That one I actually haven't played around with that much. So um, we're not gonna worry about that. Collection, it creates a little bit of a, a little dynamic way of looking at things. I, I think it's fine, but if you're if you're really strapped for time or don't want to mess around with the dimensions or anything like that, then just do a single image and work it that way. That 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 has plenty of good results as well. All right, so let's see here. Now we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna keep it with single image for the purposes of today. When you're adding an image, I'm just gonna add an image that we have here. I'm gonna go to next. As you can see here, you see the square feet. So this is what I'm talking about. So you can see here. It kind of crops us off. So make sure that you have those um, appropriate. All right, so I'm gonna go to done. So it's gonna be horizontal. So it shows actually this is a tilted, tilted picture there. Now, when it comes to the ad, you can run multiple ads. You've seen in this channel how to get seller leads. Now, that's something that um, 
that's a lot of people are looking for, especially now. So I highly encourage you to check out the video. It's about three days ago that I that I launched a video on how to get seller leads. Uh, so that is also um, a highly, a highly well, well, well worth your time if you're looking for sellers. So you can run ads for seller leads. You can run ads for buyer leads. You can run ads for investors. You can run ads for renters. You can run ads for lenters. You can run ads for commercial owners. You can run ads for anything and everything. It just comes down to messaging. What do you want to offer to your audience, the people that look at your ads? What do you want to offer them that's going to give you the highest possibility that they're going to give you their contact information? So basically, your offer is super important. Don't don't slouch on this. If it takes you three days to create a sophisticated calculator that's going to calculate a refinance if it makes sense then spend those three days to do that so the people will find value in that and are going to be more likely to click on your ad to receive that in exchange for their contact information so don't sleep on your offer make an offer and make it good so people can give you their contact information it's that simple so going through that right now one one ad that I would like for you to consider is when you have a property that's about to go out to market or you just put it on the market you're gonna run a just listed ad. And on the just listed, you're gonna say something to the effect of just listed home in, where are we advertising? Las Vegas, something like that. Just listed home in Las Vegas. And then you're gonna highlight a unique feature of the property. So here you could say, uh, brand new pool. Um, you could say, backs up to lake or lakefront property, that's better. <laughs> New uh, updated kitchen, whatever you wanna say, something that is a unique feature. Three beds, two baths, that's fine, that's good. It will work to a certain extent, but I really find a huge difference between the unique feature and um, and just being, too, um, just being too general. So having something that really stand, stands out, it's gonna really help you out. And then learn more. So you would put click learn more for price, pictures, location, uh, and virtual tour something to that effect, all right? So you can clean it up. It's it's really, it's this little tight little ad. It's, although it looks tiny and it is tidy, it packs quite a punch. It packs a wallop of a punch. This is one of the best performing ads that you're gonna ever run. I guarantee it. All right, so here we go. Uh, headline, just listed in, just listed Las Vegas home. Whoops, will not last. All right, so what's cool about this is that you have the ability to create multiple text, multiple headlines. And the reason that you can do that and the reason you wanna do that is to split test. So this will go out there and rotate, rotate, rotate and until it finds the people that resonate with a certain headline, that resonate with a certain text, that resonate with a certain description. So Facebook is out there mixing and matching. So your Facebook ads get smarter with time. That is cool, that is wicked. So um, that's something that you wanna do. And then also with your website, you can put the website in right here. So I'm just gonna put my website, ristinus.com. Now send them to a landing page, send them to a website, send them to a place that they're gonna immediately claim whatever it is that you offer them. If you are offer them a calculator, if you offer them the um, this uh, additional details on the home, then send them to a single property website where they can see the home and then they have to register to give you their contact information. Or if you're running a, um, if you have a, if you have a landing page generator, then send them to a landing page generator or a landing page that has, hey, make sure that you give me your information and then give me your name, number, and phone number, name, number, and email, and then in exchange for whatever. So basically you're driving them to an outlet that they can immediately get whatever it is that you promised them. Don't send them to your general website. This is just for the sake of this example. This is not, 
I wouldn't do this, but um, don't send them to your general website because people are going to get lost. People are going to go over to your website. I don't want the IDX. I don't know who this buyer, who this uh, agent is. I don't know what this does. I don't. I just wanted the. I just wanted to know more about this home, but looks like I'm just going to have to go back to Facebook because I'm not getting what I want. So people will get frustrated and they'll leave. You don't want that. You want to capture their attention from a good offer that you're making and then immediately drive them over to the page that you're going to give them the information or where you're looking to get their information in exchange for the deliverable. All right, so question. In a carousel ad, does one viewer see multiple images or is it one image per viewer? No, they see multiple images. They see multiple images. So just to, to show you what it looks like, if you go to carousel, the way that you're seeing it right here, that's how they'll see it. So they'll see multiple potential multiple images, and then they can scroll through to see some additional pictures. So this works fantastic if you're getting new build leads. Um, so make sure that you check that out if you're interested in new build leads. I have another video on this channel that only talks about new builds in the process of getting leads for less than $5 a piece um, for new builds, which is insane. Right now, the, um, so one of my EXP agents that just came on board and partnered with me, we're running a new build campaign over in San Antonio, and the results have just been crazy. Have just been crazy. No, it's not San Antonio. It's Austin. I get no, it's Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I don't remember having. Yeah. So it's Austin. So the results are just crushing it. So anyway, what we have now, we have we talked about our Facebook page. We talked about our business manager. We talked about the campaign that you can launch. There's multiple variations, but you at least have a good starting point. A very good starting point because there's. Everything else here, no um, no amount of masterminds that you saw probably before this video and during this video of hey, make sure you check out my mastermind and they all they spend they waste three hours of your life only to tell you the concept of a landing page. They just tell you uh, here here's a landing page. They're wasting your time. So here you invested whatever time it is that you're watching this right now. You're at least getting value, not um, like, not like that junk. And uh, hate to bash my competitors, but some of them are just absolutely silly. All right, so let's talk about what happens after the ads, uh, after you start getting leads. I want to introduce to you Zapier. If this is the first time that you see Zapier, here's what um, here's what we're doing. Dependent on your CRM or how you get your leads, depending on how that happens and what you're doing over here on Facebook is the connection that you're going to make. So I'll give you an example. Here, we're driving all the traffic to a landing page. So if you have Builderall, if you have ClickFunnels, if you have, um, what else is out there? There's so many uh, lead pages. If you're using any of those landing page generators, then you would look for that event here. Um, so you would look for a way to connect your landing pages to your CRM because keep in mind how they end up in your landing page is through your Facebook ad, right? So you're sending them over there. And then it's from once they're there, you need them to go to your CRM or you need them to go to your email, whatever it is that you have. Now. If you are running a Facebook lead ad, now this is a little bit different because we just ran a traffic campaign. Keep in mind, the traffic campaign. If we had run a lead ad, which keeps people on Facebook, then I would use Zapier right here, the Facebook lead ads function, which you do have to pay for it. Um, I'll link it down below. This one's not an affiliate of mine, so just so you have the resource, but the Zapier, the, the Zapier connection is down below. So. If you have, if you're running a Facebook lead ads and keeping people on Facebook, then you want to come here. You want to Zapier to go to that Facebook lead ad, pull that lead, and then email it to you or send it to your CRM or do whatever it is that you do. Add it to a spreadsheet, whatever it happens to be. So that's what you want to do at the end of the day. That's something that is super valuable for your business. So make sure that your understanding of how this works is um is very pivotal because we just talked about how to set everything up to get our ads. We just talked about how to actually get our leads and run our ads. And now we need to talk about how do we dis do the dismount? How do we send them to where we need to? Zapier is one way to do it. 
Some of your CRMs have a direct connection. So as an example, since I'm with eXp, I get KV Core for free. So what that means is I can use KV Core and directly connect it to Facebook through a software that they have, which is API Nation, which happens to be another company, but it's free for the connection. So I don't have to come in here and pay for the Zapier account to connect my Facebook leads to my KV Core. So from KV Core, I connect to what something's called API Nation, which is another company, phenomenal company, connects to API Nation and Facebook. So then the lead comes, comes straight to uh, KV Core and then the emails go out, the texts go out and everything. So this, I just wanna give you a different look at you know the inner workings. Not many people are gonna show you this and the uh, as in depth. So I wanna make sure that with this mastery call about, or this mastery video on how to get real estate leads, you absolutely saw everything. Is it pos is possible work with college collage also? Uh, so I'm gonna say that, is it possible to work with a collage? Yeah, you can do a collage. Um, I believe that's what the question is. All right, so let me know. Um, and so questions, 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 questions. I'm taking them right now before we sign off. What are some good remarketing ad ideas? People who fill out the lead form but don't respond to emails, calls, and to... So with remarketing ideas, um, or remarketing in general, not even just ideas, think about the think about the people that submitted that information. Back to your point, let me pull it up again. So for people who fill out the lead form but don't respond to emails, calls, and text follow-up, just continue showering them with value. So this means that if you run an ad for new construction, let's just say, if you're running an ad for new construction and you're getting a ton of leads, especially if you're in the, using the ad copy that I share in my video on how to get new, new builds, so I encourage you to check that out. But if you're running these ads and you're getting all of these leads and they ghosted you, you wanna show up again. But you don't wanna show up again so aggressively, like, hey, why aren't you answering my phone call? That's just not gonna work. Um, there's, there, if, you, if you do it correctly in different messaging, yeah, it could work, but it's not, generally most people aren't gonna be able to pull that off. What you wanna do though, is retarget them with information that they, information that they need to know about new construction. Hey, with new construction, you get a one, two, and 10 year home warranty. The first, uh, the first year is a bumper to bumper. So everything that you can see, it can be fixed within the first year of warranty. Two year is generally your plumbing and your electrical. Anything goes wrong with the electrical or plumbing, you're gonna be covered. 10 year is structural. If your wall falls over, you have that fixed. So just going and approaching it from a value add perspective, you may be thinking, well, I'm just educating them and they're never gonna use me. No, <laughs> that doesn't happen. Well, maybe that will happen a little bit, but you don't want to work with those people anyway. You're educating them, but at the same time, you're establishing your authority, your knowledge, your the somebody that is providing so much value that even if they were considering going at it alone, why would they whenever they have a professional like you that has all of this industry information because this is likely one of their biggest decisions of their financial life. So they want to go with a professional that will help them out. So that's the type of retargeting that I would do. Value add in different capacities, educating on the buyer process, on the seller process, and then always give the, uh, always give the, hey, make sure to reach out. If you have any questions, I can, I can waive your inspection fee or something like that if you wanted to cut into your commissions. I'd like to see a video setting up conversion events. Tom, you are in luck. Um, so if you have about 30 more minutes on you, go and check out my video on conversion ads. In fact, you just you don't even have to go to my channel. Just go to YouTube and type in conversion ads. My video is number one. So there, you can go and uh, conversion ads is gonna walk you all the way through. All right, so how much is a good budget for remarketing Google Display? My budget is $350 a month. It was looking to spend $50 a day for a week. Um... How much is good budget for remarketing Google Display? 350, that's okay. I whenever I talk about Google, I here's here's my here's my general rule of thumb. If you're getting into Facebook ads, I encourage you to do $300 a month. If you're doing Facebook ads, I encourage you to do $500 a month. And that's my general rule. Now, 350 that's low for my rule can it be effective sure it just depends on your audience depends on your targeting but since i'm speaking to audiences everywhere california florida new uh, uh new york australia i mean every as in a lot of countries i shouldn't say every country 
a lot of countries. I just gave you the I just gave you the general. 300 bucks if you're looking to get into Facebook ads, minimum is what you should consider. And then 500 minimum what you should consider for Google. That's just my that's just my opinion. All right, so we have um so we have somebody that's promoting their channel. <laughs> this is just uh all right, so <laughs> Um, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna highlight any uh, any spammers here. So you just you just got yourself the ban button, my friend. But thanks for being here on the live. I appreciate that. Um, do you use chatbots for lead generation? If so, any examples you can provide? I'll make a video on chatbots. I'm not opposed to chatbots. I'm not the biggest. I'm not the biggest advocate for chatbots. I think they have their place. Just um, I think that they've been oversold for most people. That it's the magic formula. It's not. It's not, so chat uh, chatbots have their place. It's a great conversion tool if you know how to use it, but most people get frustrated long before a chatbot even becomes um, something viable for them. So chatbots, I'll make a video about that um, on how to do a chatbot and how to integrate it to your Facebook. No issue with that. I just wanna make sure that everybody is aware that a chatbot is nothing more than a communication tool. So think of it like email marketing where what matters is the offer that you give. What matters is how you speak to people, and that is what you're talking about. So communicating with them. Now, yes, chatbots generally, because of the platform that they're they're on, which is um the messages platform, because of the platform that they're on, they're generally going to have higher higher um higher open rates. But they are not the answer to your business. If your business is absolutely just floundering and you're looking for the magic pill, chatbots are not going to be it. So nothing's going to replace the offering something of value. Nothing's going to replace the having a good, consistent follow-up. It's not going to be replaced. So most people see chatbots as the answer to their entire problems. That's just not a thing. So anyway, that is my opinion on that. So make sure I, um, I highlight you. Thank you, Chuck. How do you, hi, do you have a reply for this video? So a replay for this video? So yes, so this will be this will be up as soon as um, I broadcast this. So as soon as I end this broadcast, it'll show up automatically. So, all right, folks. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. This is a brand new year. This is a great year to get started on your Facebook ads if you haven't already. If you're already on Facebook ads, a great time to master it. If you have any questions about the process, any question about business manager, anything that comes up, make sure that you smash that like button and comment down below. I'll gladly take the, um, the question and really uh, expand upon it. Outside of that, you have a great rest of the day. I'll see you next, well, I was about to say next week. No, I'll see you on Friday. Bye.